<laughs> Welcome to the final 10 before a thousand episodes. And I'm joined by Rob, Rob Smith of the Smoke and Mirrors podcast. You like that professional intro? I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'd like expect to guess like the price of an item and then run down the stairs and then like, yeah. It's like uh, the, the game refrigerator show. was <laughs> the game show host before that used to kiss people on the lips. I forgot what his name was. Do you remember who I'm talking about? No, I've never seen that. That it's, is wild. It's not Alex Trebek. It was another one, but he used to greet the contestants and then kiss them on the lips. And it was like back in the day, you could get away with that type of like old, old school style things. Now you'd be like sexually like charged with sexual assault, but it's OK. Yeah. Your trial wouldn't show up anyway. It's COVID times. You can't even blow candles out in a cake now. I'm still going to eat it. It's I'm, I don't, yeah, COVID doesn't exist people, when it comes to Baskin Robbins ice cream cake. That just doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't. Pe people are making like cupcakes with individual candles on there now. They've That's always done that. Oh, really? Maybe not in Australia. I just thought it was but... now. Yeah, maybe it didn't reach, you know, across the pond just yet. Just yet. Now it's now now it's a big thing. Yeah. We're, we're a bit late to the party. I forgot who told me something about like the secret of those game shows, but like when they do the magic curtains, if they have three curtains up and they say guess behind number curtain number one, number two, or number three, which curtain would you pick? Two. So it'd be two. And then so if two opens up, let's say it's like a jet ski or something. But then they go, Do you want to double your options and do maybe the one behind one or three? And you'd be like, oh, my God, I can double my options. And they go, uh, I'll take either you can play it safe or you can go for the other curtain. Usually people go for the other curtain and then they move the floors. So the floor switch. So you end up getting like the wrong thing, like the worst. Quack, quack, quack. That's always the sound they do. And I'm like, it just shows you that it's all rigged. I don't trust any of it. I think the only thing you can really trust is like, um. Even if you go to carnival games, man, you're tossing darts at the balloons and stuff like that. They inflate it to a certain point where it won't pop. So then you're sitting yeah. there tossing. Like the only thing I've ever been good at is carnival games. The guy's are like, how is he winning? I'm like, I don't know. I just have a, a unique skill. It's only good on dates and no other part of my life. It's like taken, but for carnival games. I mean, if I miss out on a Tahiti trip or a jet ski, because some fucking asshole decides to move the floor, I'm going to lose my shit. Like, <laughs> imagine being on that show and finding out that afterwards. You'd be like, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. My plan was to always, like, you know, either get the jet ski or the car or something like that. And the fuck am I going to do with a car or a jet ski? So I would flip it, right? I would sell that car or a jet ski and I'd just get the money. All I want, All I wanted was the money. How the fuck was I going to look the poorest house on the block in a unit, but I got a jet ski out the front. Dude, we just got into like conspiracy territory. Imagine when they pick their guests, because you have to, they, they don't just randomly select. They have people saying, hey, you're going to be the person that goes up and you're going to win your prize. Um, yeah. Imagine if they look at your profile and they have like how a census has like really weird. You ever take a census before? Yeah. They ask some dumb questions like, what did you do in the date of January 7th, whatever, the, and they rattle off like a random date. Like, I don't know what I fucking did, um, but maybe like they'll give you four options. Did you A, be a piece of shit, two, be a piece of shit, three, be a piece of shit. And it's like, all right, well, I guess I'm one of these. But then if they get a profile of you on the game shows, then they select you. Then they just give you options they know you're going to refuse. So the first curtain that shows up, let's say you're a paraplegic or you're someone that has like, um, what is that? Uh, epilepsy. You can never drive. So the first curtain you open up, you just want a new car. And you're like, well, I can't fucking use that. So I'm going to have to go for it. I'm not going to just stay with this. <laughs> then like, what happens if they get a person that's like, you are you just want a new pair of shoes? You just want a whole selection of Versace or Gucci shoes. And you're like, I don't have any fucking legs. Like, I obviously am going to double down. And then they keep doing that until you get to the last two curtains. And then they switch them on you where you get nothing. Instead of selling it, they just pick your profile out. They find out what you're not going to be able to use. And they give that to you as the opening thing. So it lures you in like, oh, I just won this. I can definitely win again. Those fuckers. 
we got to make a pact right now. If we're ever on a game show, if we ever get profiled, which sounds very serial killery, we got to take like the first thing that they give us. The first thing is like, even if it's like, I don't know, like a new pair of skis, I'm taking the fucking skis and I'm eBaying that shit first night. I, um, I've talked to a few people, friends of mine who've been on like a uh, wheel of fortune and all that. And they're like, it's not what you think it is. And I'm like, what do you mean? They go, it's the most awkward, uncomfortable thing in the world. Like they make sure that you're not going to do anything crazy. Like, um, did you see on the news, the guy, uh, there's an original news trending video with a lady talking about like, and we have this person who was there at the scene. They took over to her and he goes, fuck her right in the pussy. That has taken off <laughs> worldwide. Well, recently he did it again. He was wearing a mask and they go, what are you yeah. for? What are you for Halloween? He was like, I don't really know what I am, but there's one thing I'd like to say. And like, what? And he takes off the mask, goes, fuck her right in the pussy. And she goes, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's twice in her career. So I'm like, that's what I'm saying is like, they have to vet you before that happens. So yeah. then, but when I was talking to my buddies who like have been on it, they haven't been on TV, but they're like cheering people on. They're doing that. There's so much fakeness behind it where it's like they have signs that say applause. They have all these types yep. of things. It's kind of like being on like one of those late shows, like for a yep. comedian or for someone like me and you, it might seem really cool to be on like a Fallon or like a Colbert, but I feel like mm. our personalities, the way that it actually is, we wouldn't enjoy it. It's kind of like with this podcast, for instance. Yeah. When you're on the show, we don't really talk a whole lot before we get on air and everything, but we're, it's just mm. me and you talking, you know, I can choose yep. not to post this, but when you go on to Fallon or something, you know, like they have a perfect setup. There's no talking. You're sitting in your dressing room all before you go on stage. It's kind of like the scene from the Joker where he's waiting in the thing and they come and talk to him before. And then he gets up on yeah. stage and doesn't know what he's going to do. It's just so yep. scripted. And I'm like, I would fucking hate that man. Same, same. And like they, would have like backup questions as well. That's why I think Jimmy Fallon will just cut people off like mid sentence, be like, tell us about this. Like, no, I don't want to talk about that. Well, who's the guy who played in the queen movie, uh, played Freddie Mercury. Um, Rami Malek. He, um, was like talking to Jimmy and Jimmy like stepped on something he was trying to say. And then Jimmy's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And he goes, it's fine. And like, Jimmy had his hand out and he grabbed Jimmy's hand, like to hold it, like the fingertips part where it's like this, where it's kind of like, like, oh, kiss my kiss my hand. Like, oh, you know, like your royalty or something. And yeah. he did it. And Jimmy went, what the fuck? And then like pulled his hand away. Like it was really, really awkward and cringy where I was like, oh, my God. Like he did not want to be touched by another man. <laughs> he probably has that. Hey, eh? like you're my best friend. I love you. Stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> Well, it's, um, what do you call it? Uh, they, he has Pete Davidson on so many times. I've seen Pete Davidson on the Fallon show and I realized that they're best friends and that's why he keeps going on there. And it's like, there's a point to that. Instead of just having new guests every single time, if you know that you have a friend that you rather get some promotion to, or if you have a good conversation with that person, you know, I'm going to invite him on for you. For instance, it's Rob Smith from the smoke and mirrors podcast, shameless plug again, yeah. but also the man who drank breast milk. The man who almost hit a koala with his car. <laughs> you have an amazing portfolio. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't put it on my resume. But, uh, I mean, yeah. Fuck. Pete Davidson, man. Like, this guy is going wild. He's ripping through Hollywood. He's ripping through, like, all, like, the pop princesses as well. He's got to have a dick on him. There's no way he's pulling, with, pulling it because of his looks. He has, like, child sex offender looks on him. He does. He does have the profile for one. So he is not. Yeah. He, he would be picked for Jeopardy. <laughs> Especially if he's got the hat on. He's got the hat on with that brow and like a little bit of facial hair. Because he almost like now that his hair is like blonde, he almost has like that Hulk Hogan bleach blonde hair with like the dyed brown beard as well. It just looks weird. He just has the face of a skeleton. <laughs> like sunken big eyes. cheeks and like big giant bug eyes kind of. <laughs> It's like the animated skeleton and he dances. <laughs> uh, oh. um, I was trying to, cause I'm, I think me and you talked about the film that I'm making. I, I'm excited. Cause I hope you guys can review it on your show. Yeah, for sure. We'll talk about it for sure. 
because I have like a bunch of people reviewing it. I'm like, I don't just don't expect like a Michael Bay or some type of like amazing. <laughs> th- I made it. I'm going to manage to make it to two hours on it. So that's going to be pretty impressive. It's pretty hard to get all those scenes together, considering that every scene's like 30 seconds to a minute long. So that's just yeah. multiple like it's kind of like a. Uh, Mr. Rogers, like the opening show where he's like putting his jacket in the closet. But at this point, oh, yeah. he gets kidnapped and then he enters like Alice in Wonderland in his closet. That's kind of the whole theme of the movie. OK, cool. So it's all like the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Yeah, except there's not a fucking winter wonderland and a goddamn coat rack. You know what I mean? Like, that's really strange how that movie played out. I was like a bunch of kids just got sucked into a wardrobe and nobody's talking about this. I don't know. Like if that was just Australian programming, but they would throw that on every time there was a rainy day or at school, they would, they would roll the, the fucking, the TV into the, you know, when like, you know, they'd roll the TV <laughs> into the room and then be like, Hey, hey look what we're going to show you guys. The teacher was having a hangover or something. They had, he's like, I don't yeah. know. We're going to watch Forrest Gump. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I don't want to watch Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Now that that movie I had some questions too. I was like, wait, did Forrest get AIDS? Because didn't Jenny die of AIDS? Yeah. Big time. Or did he just have like the penis that didn't take in fluids? You know what I mean? The kid though. Is that an AIDS baby? Must have dodged him too. His name was Forrest as well. He was pale as shit. I was like, bro, <laughs> he looks like yeah, a but carrier. He... <laughs> but <laughs> But he grew up to see ghosts. You know what I mean? There's something even more fucked up <laughs> yeah, about I that totally kid. <laughs> oh my god! He also did that sex ed movie, where he's teaching people how to like properly give yeah. oral. Or you don't remember that sex education? It's on Netflix or Hulu or something. I haven't watched it yet, but I did see him in Tusk, and I was like blown away because like, uh, what's his name? Haley Joel Osment just like blew up. He looked completely different from that kid that you seen in Sixth Sense. Like I seen him in Sixth Sense, and then I seen him again, and I was like, "Wow, he did some living in those years." He like, mm, yeah. I think it's that's probably like a puberty thing. I think your metabolism slows down depending on what age it is. But did you ever? Oh yeah. He, you know who Tim Dillon is? Tim is that Matt Dillon's brother? No, um, he's a comedian. He he's done like a lot of like uh, popular. A lot of things have been like um he recently he would during the Tokyo Olympics, he kind of voiced over it as a joke and a bunch of like news articles captured it and tweeted it out like Mike caught on at Tokyo Olympics when really he was like, they're going to chop these people up into sushi as like a joke. He just voice over <laughs> it. He did the same thing with a pilot thing as well, too, um, about like the Delta uh, and all this type of stuff, like wear your fucking mask and I'll see you all at the Capitol, if you know what I mean, as like a joke. And yeah. um, he had he has a had a crazy like history. He was talking about being on Sesame Street when he was like five and like seven or something. And then he did like a couple episodes on that. And then they got rid of him. And he was like, what happened? He goes, because they're apparently their audience wanted a younger person to be on Sesame Street. So seven was too old. Right. And he goes, that's when I first dived into Hollywood. Dude, I don't think people understand is like as much as you can shit on an actor, dude, this whole entire acting game, all that type of stuff is probably the most sketchiest businesses out there. I mean, the fact that there's a whole entire thing of what is it? Um, Oh God, I'm going to, I'm going to blank on it. It's a, uh, the equality of outcome, which is that you need to have a certain amount of writers like, OK, if you have a, a boardroom filled with writers, even though you're all friends or something, you have to incorporate one ethnicity of this or one person that doesn't identify as a certain gender. So when they do take the picture, everyone sees, oh, it's not just a, a boardroom of white men. I'm like, when did we just stop letting creativity happen? When did we just let like. Do you watch a film going, I wonder if the director is bisexual? I wonder if the director identifies as a cat. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. You're watching the film. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we tell the story a lot in our, in our podcast about um, how Sigourney Weaver was cast for Alien, right? They didn't write Ripley as a female. They just wrote Ripley. And then she rocked up. She was the best audition. They believed in her and, and put her in the role. You know what I mean? It wasn't about male or a female. The same thing that just happened recently, actually, with the next Mad Max. So there's this actor who's going to be in Matrix Resurrections as well. He's been in Candyman, Yaya Abdul-Mateen the second. 
So he's a black actor. He dropped out of the next Mad Max and a white guy took his place. There hasn't been any uproar on the internet yet, but like, you know, I wouldn't put it by them. Um, but that just shows me that it's, it was just a character that was written, not a character that was written for a black actor. I wonder why they did that because recently there's a thing called an Afro ban, which is going on and it's specifically targeted towards like African American people. And it's about travel banning um, because China is just not about African American people. Um, wow. They, 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 there's been uh, talks. So there was a couple of movie posters that came out and, and China, they made the person who was of a, of that color really, really small on the poster because they don't like, they don't recognize certain types of things. And nobody talks about, they talk about white supremacy and racism. Go to fucking China. They don't give a fuck. You, 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 you do a riot there. You're dead. You're gone missing like the tennis player that's been gone for like a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. But they, uh, so I wonder like if that's, probably a cause of it too it's gonna like i said before we started talking we got a lot to talk about it's about to get very interesting the ceo of twitter is stepping down yep so the section 230 ban is trending because whoever is going to pick that plate up the section 230 bill allows censorship um around this time i think probably about a month ago you remember the facebook whistleblower who was getting a lot of news she was yep. sanctioned by like the government so she was kind of like because if you're going, like, let's say me and you are going against Mark Zuckerberg, we want to pass mm -hmm. the Section C C two thirty bill, or the C uh, Section uh, two thirty bill. Why would we try and pass that bill if Mark Zuckerberg is pro that bill? Now, if you're saying you're Mark Zuckerberg's enemy and you're exposing his evil, you guys are in support of the same exact thing. So you start hitting these boundaries where it's like, I get the issues with the algorithms. We need to fix those. But this censorship thing is going to get bigger and it's going to end up hitting movies like I was talking about with the Afro band thing. That's going to eventually happen to a bunch of things. Sooner or later, we might get into conflicts with China. We might have bans on Australia is banning like Joe Rogan. They're talking about banning a bunch of different stuff that are coming over from the states you're now censoring each other on certain things what people can do and this is where it starts to lead down some sketchy territory where we might have some movies over here you guys don't have our movies because you guys refuse to deal with anything that deals with maybe this certain actor maybe this certain yeah. thing yeah australia's been really um late to the party in everything so at one point we couldn't get certain games over here because we didn't have the rating equivalent to release them at so what we call like a MA, which is mature audiences, they they said, well, this game is worse than that. So a game like Bully, um, the Rockstar game. The pick on kids. Uh, South Park's The uh, Fractured But Whole. <laughs> That's a good game. Uh, <laughs> so like things like that, they'd be like, um, yeah, we're not releasing it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, San Andreas. When that dropped, couldn't get it. Does that just because like they off? released it hmm? does that piss you off fucking oath it pisses me off censorship as a whole is dog shit right like i don't need another parent to then come into my life and then say you can't see this well why not you're making that movie notorious it might not be that great a fucking product you know what i mean well, the, so the, the censorship is just super, super fucking weird because it doesn't make any sense. What they're trying to censor is online speech on their platforms. But then you look at a, a, a thing of like a parent has to now monitor their kids because Sesame Street is talking about getting the vaccine. Like everything's been weaponized to that specific thing. And it's like these narratives. You didn't see that episode of Sesame Street. They had a whole I fucking see. lemonade stand signed up saying, get your shot. And they had Sanjay Gupta from CNN talking to all these kids about it. And then Oscar the Grouch is holding that one drug that they call horse dewormer. And it's like you're getting into these weird territories where like it's going to cause parents to want to keep their kids homeschooled. And that here's the issue when you start homeschooling your kids is now everyone's going to be really pissed off at that and want to try and fight to not have their kids homeschooled. My kid needs to go to a public school, just like that kid who's homeschooled needs to go to a public school. Well, it's not your kid. If that parent wants to take that kid, their kid, and homeschool them, they have the right to. That's not fair because they could be teaching my kids something that my, the, or they could be teaching their kids something that my kid's not able to know. That gives him an advantage in life. 
And then that's where we get into the sketchy territory of like, oh my God, you're supposed to do like good parenting, excel. We all knew those kids in school. I knew plenty of them. I was an F student. They were all A students. I just couldn't sit down and pay attention. I didn't care about fucking calculus and shit. Yep. But these kids went there. Guess what? We're kind of doing the same thing in life, but their parents thought, get them in all the extracurricular activities. You're going to make sure you get honor roll. And if you even get a B minus or a B, I'm going to fucking disown the shit out of you. <laughs> that type of strict parenting was because they wanted their kids to excel in life. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And like to a certain extent that teaches work ethic and it also teaches like drive for excellence. Right. But on the flip side of that, it, like, Parents only offer parents of that, I think, standard only offer like ridicule when their kids don't bring in the results that they want. Because the results are just for them to then boast to their friends and then say, hey, like, you know, my kid's on the honor roll. Who gives a fuck? Like the fucking really alcoholic that has honor yeah. roll stickers all over the back of their bumper so much where it covers the whole bumper it's like again and again and again and again that's just the signal <laughs> to every parent who's waiting behind you or every person behind you that you've invested your whole life being a worthless piece of shit but your kid is yeah. going to excel yeah and like you know every other parents like i haven't done my job right i feel completely dog shit but i like I, I, I wouldn't do that to my kids. I like to sort of let them make the decision, almost inception them because one day I'm not going to be there. You know what I mean? And for them to then go out into the world and realize that it's just going to fucking like, you know, knock you down and down and down and down. And you got to work to pick yourself up. Like that's the, the real life lesson. You know what I mean? That it's perseverance and persistence over results well parenting is just like i'm surprised that anybody can really do it right and i think as a parent you're surprised if it actually does go right because i think the oh, best yeah. trait for me to inherit into my kid or to do anything that would be to instill into children would be the fact of just being open-minded because i believe if you have a kid's uh like kind of research or study so much to where they're super super smart and they get a's all the time that just kind of incentivizes them to be kind of subjective or dismissive of another person's thoughts because it's like, what do you know? I got Matt, I, I got fucking sumo cum laude, whatever the fuck that degree is that you get like an get that little sash when you're at graduation. Everyone's just fucking flicking you off like you're a piece of shit. <laughs> um, I'd rather my kid just be like, get D's, get F's. I don't care. But when you excel in life, when you do something. Make sure it's something that you're really fucking interested in. If you want to win Game of Wheel of Fortune, go on there. If you, we'll get Howie, we'll get what is it, Howie Mandel? We'll dust his yeah. ass off and get him on Deal or No Deal again, just so you can excel at something. But make sure that when you get put into something, you need to like. I'm I'm pro. Like, it, look, I don't care if you support my podcast. I really don't. But don't stand in my way of it coming to fruition or me doing something to make sure that I can still take my shot because I think everyone deserves their shot but mm -hmm. what about the viable option of making sure they can get that and it just gets crazier now because i mean for youtube's updating their terms and services on january i think 5th which is mm -hmm. weird like january 6th My is birthday. a big moment uh, january 5th is your birthday yeah happy birthday early <laughs> by a me. month <laughs> <laughs> But I think we need to understand is like with the amount of censorship that's going out there, it's going to make it very, very hard, depending on where you're from, to be able to do anything that you want to do, such as doing anything like this independent journalism. And I don't I mean, I want to even call this independent journalism, even bullshitting with your friends. It's yeah. just it gets very, very sketchy, um, especially with I think with the media. There's just so much media out there that the only way to really fix these news corporations to make them more liable for the things that they say is means you have to ban all the outside networks that are not number networks or letter networks like CNN and MSNBC. But then I think these private yeah. journalists or people that do try and, you know, I was watching the Ghislaine Max trial. Someone put up, first of all, you can't watch it. There's no in, there's no video courtroom footage of it. You have to call a number and you have to sit on a phone line because they're like, it's so damn impossible to try and watch it. And I'm like, this is like the most important fucking trial of like the whole entire year. But 
um, there's independent people that are retweeting the links and sharing it. And every time they keep taking it down and they keep going to another thing, that's important. But the censorship is just very weird what they choose to ban. I think the ma major fix needs to be maybe checking out on some of these algorithms. I don't mind if Netflix recommends me shit, but don't fucking recommend a shooting video after I've just watched a video of someone shooting uh, a duck or shooting clays. Next thing you know, I see a person getting shot in the head. Next thing I know, I see someone mm -hmm. taking a TikTok video inside my house with a gun to my head. I'm like, holy fuck. And it shoots me right in the head. <laughs> That's interactive. Um, yeah, I I don't want any part of like censorship, but it's also like guiding the narrative of the world and how it flows. You know what I mean? There's like one story that's going to go ahead but you, they're stopping you from seeing everything else that would inform your decisions and it's just it's weird i feel lied to sometimes and i'm like well actually carl rittenhouse like because all i seen was like him crying and it like when that context of he's fake crying goes over it it's like shit but then when you hear some of the other things that have come out well it wasn't like, it wasn't wow, this it wasn't fake crying I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know, but when people like retweet that, just the clip of him like crying his eyes out, and they're like, "These are all fake tears," and you're like, "Fuck that lying motherfucker." But then when like you know you read into what actually happened, it's like, well, "Shit, wasn't he justified then?" Yeah, you know well, I mean, mean? nobody but even talked about the court case that happened the same exact day where it was a person of a different color, Andrew Coffey who did the same exact thing, basically a self-defense plea, but he shot cops and he got off yep. because it was a self-defense charge. I think people don't understand is that a lot of people were investing their time into that Rittenhouse thing because it was self-defense. And mm -hmm. that that was a trial like it's as important as the Gisling Max trial. It kind of shows you this trial. The fact that it's not being broadcasted anywhere is showing you how much these networks are banned from covering it. They don't even really talk about it. It just shows you the fuckery that goes on. I think the important part about like um, <sighs> the issue is, is that if you're trying to create something like the metaverse or you're trying to create some virtual reality thing that's going to encapsulate the world. You have to think of like a population basis, which is if I open up this doorway to make virtual reality funner than actual reality, people are not going to want to go live their life. They're just going to stay inside the game. But then the also the thought comes into your head. It goes, well, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it. So I might as well get the money from it. So it's basically like this inevitable downfall into just leading into like probably the worst possible scenario, which is just seclusion and isolation. We're already in that with COVID as well. So we're looking at the pacification of the next generation. The next generation that's going to come up and then go, well, VR is normal. Fuck the real world. Why do I care about, like, you know, what's shaping up outside or, or what rights I'm going to lose? I don't know. I mean, like, I, I find it weird in Australia how we were told, all right, those people that aren't vaccinated from December 1st, you're going to get those rights back. And everyone was like, whoa, all right, cool. Well, maybe I'll just hold out. It's only like, you know, another month I've held out this long. And then they go, well, actually, let's move the goalpost. 95% vaccination. We're currently at 87% uh, vaccination, double dose. And, uh, well, let's put it at December 15th. Yeah, but the and numbers people, keep going like, up of deaths. So it's like, obviously, it's it's showing you that the shot isn't as effective as people might think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the viral load's still the same, right? Like, if you can still transmit it and you can still catch it, well, what's the fucking difference? Well, the issue to me was that the news corporations are all sponsored by Pfizer. And even Moderna is saying now that, like, oh, we're um, <clears throat> the idea that it's, like, interchangeable. Or that this this dose will last for the, the the new Omicron variant. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like Moderna's like, it's not going to work. It's going to take us a few months to get data from it. But people run off with things and it spreads misinformation. I think, dude, it's some, if you're going to ban things on misinformation, can we just make sure that we're banning all of it then? That means any opinion that goes out there needs to be banned or mm -hmm. you have to let everything else be up there. It can't be pick and choose. You can't cherry pick your shit. That's right. So what, what was weird when I got vaccinated, right? I hadn't like obviously not been vaccinated. 
but within two weeks I was double vaccinated. They said for me, that was fine. They're like, you want to like, you know, you want to accelerate your doses? I was like, cool. Why not? Chuck them on there. I was like, I want my freedom just like everybody else. It's like you're in the middle of a uh, lunch line. You ask for extra mashed potatoes. And she goes, I know how you like extra mashed potatoes and tosses them on you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and my, my missus did the same thing. She was like, fuck it. You're getting two weeks. I'm doing two weeks. Went to the same place. Got it done. My brother-in-law calls up. Hey, can I uh, schedule in my my vaccination? They're like, how long has it been since your first one? A week. And they're like, well, you need to wait at least three weeks. And he was like, my sister's getting her vaccination right now. And they were like, we don't do that here. Put the phone down on him. So it's like, it's not consistent. Oh, why can't it be as simple as like donating sperm? You can be any be piece of much shit fun. <laughs> and donate sperm. You can be any he, type of person and donate sperm, but no, that fucking all this type of other medical shit is like, why is like the most fragile thing, which is the future populations that get put out into the world, the most easiest one to go through. But the fact is that like the one that keeps all the people that are ruining society alive are fucking easy as shit. <laughs> no way. And even in Japan, they make it even easier. They got their milking... <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> it's true <laughs> i'm not saying it's not it's just a dark road to get into we've There's traveled gonna... lots of dark roads together <laughs> we have um it, to, to think about it though if you really think like remember the idea of crisper of like crisping your babies and all that type of stuff where you can I, you don't remember crisper no, so I don't think we got that here in Australia. Or Crisp, I missed it. CRISPR is a, like a laboratory down here, I guess, in the States. But it, what it is is gene therapy. So you're able to manipulate a person's genetics and ba basically delete traits. So let's say you walk up and go, hey, um, I want to check, see if my kid is going to have a propensity for lung cancer like I do or something. And then the doctor goes, yeah, we could do that. So in the womb, it'll genetically modify and delete that gene out of the out of the baby. So your baby doesn't have to worry about lung cancer. But then it got to a weird, sketchy line where eventually it was getting to the point of like, OK, well, if we can do that, why can't I just make my kid really good at, at athletics? Or maybe I want him to have blue eyes instead of brown eyes. Maybe I want him to have blonde hair. Maybe I want him to have like a thin nose instead of a large nose. And then it got to that weird point where there were people trying to modify certain things about it that necessarily is like creating the perfect superhuman. Um, it still is along the sketchy lines of things too. But then I go, well, if you're going to excel, like let's say, Rob, you want your kid to be really, really funny. You want your kid to be really, really talented in all sports. And you want your kid to be like seven foot tall. Then the doctor has to go, okay, but he's going to be dyslexic and he's going to have one foot because you can't have all those good perks. You have to have some bad ones or you'd have a genetically super <laughs> modified baby. They're doing that in China. I mean, there was a there was a rule when they were making superhumans, which we've we've tried to do. Russia's tried to do and China's kind of doing now. The issue is, is that the sperm from that person would have to be blank. They would be no like no reproductive factors in the superhuman, because then you would have a whole entire race of just superhuman people. So that means the testing that that person has to go through, like Spartans, a Spartan 117 and all that. They yeah. can't have kids because then you would keep breeding more Spartans. So that was the idea behind it was having them give take away their ability to have kids um, and create an elite race of people, which I just think if someone really took the time to understand what a capacity of our brain could really do, I bet we could unlock some serious shit, dude. Like, I bet you have a super intense dream that just has changed the way that you probably lived your life. It's been impactful to you. Give me, give me one. Do you have yeah. one? You got one? I do. Um, there was, uh, when my son was born, it was probably like maybe six to seven months. Right. Um, actually, no, he was a year and a half. And at the time I was seeing a therapist because I was going through PTSD from his birth. Weirdly, I would never. Yeah. So the shock of another human being coming into your life and like, you know, now you have a child 
like oh. really affected me. I, I was thinking PTSD whenever you get down to like your girl's uh, area. You just picture a baby popping out like it or something like out of the sewer. Hello. And you're like, holy shit. <laughs> Hiya, daddy. Why do you got balloons in here? And you're fucking smacking <laughs> balloons away. Red, blue, green, yellow. <laughs> um, yeah. So I had this dream that my son was being kept by vampires and I was forced to run this loop over and over again. This, this loop was like, it looked like Pandora from Avatar, right? And I was running through the trees and shit like that and, and kind of swinging and then going back. And I'd have to run this loop constantly through the day. Um, and when I, when I kind of broke it down for myself, it was he was being left at home and, like, you know, someone else was caring for him and I was forced to work every day. And being away from him, I felt bad because... Like I wanted that connection with him. So it was, it was just like, it was so weird how that kind of played out because years later after like, you know, I eventually had this weird nervous breakdown, um, quit my job and everything changed. I quit my job after like 15 years and I went from corporate world to the warehouse and I was able to spend more time with him. I had more flexibility and, like that was probably the happiest that I've ever been. That's that's nice of you. That's awesome. I think that was a large pool for a lot of people during this pandemic of having to return to work was a lot of mm. people finally got time with their kids who are very, very little. I mean, you want to mm. be able to come home and be recognized by your kid, but it's a weird that's moment right. in your life when you come home and you're seen as a stranger, like a uncle that mm. nobody ever gets to see. You know what I mean? That's mm. a that's a dark kind of realization in life. And there are people that experience that type of thing. I try and understand people's experiences as much as I possibly can. I think movies, um, especially, I don't want to talk about it again, but damn it, I've always mentioned it now because I'm just so excited to make it a film. Um, yeah. I'm trying to make it the most relatable thing ever and also experiences that never get shown. You might see somebody go through some tragic shit. You might see somebody go through some positive shit. But what about a scene where a person just gets a hole in their tire and just sits on the ground in their driveway, just like, why does this always happen to me? Staring up at the sky and contemplating his own existence. I mean, if I can say the words and it can paint a picture into your head, then why the fuck yeah. is nobody ever showing it? There's a lot of movies about fantasy shit. I'm pro Spider-Man. I'm pro all those types of movies, even though Tobey Maguire will always be my Spider-Man. But there needs to be some realistic ones as well too, not documentaries, but I think a lot of people are really afraid to notice something that's real because it could be mm. them at any moment. And I don't yeah. think we should be living in this type of fantasy realm. Yeah. I like my movies, like yeah. whatever being kind of crazy and out there, you know, going into space or doing something that an average person can't do. But I also yep. like, I think you need more of those movies that are not uh, less about vampires, more about like actual fucking people so you start to understand another person's perspective that's the best thing you can do mm, yeah um i i recently watched nomadland you watch this chloe mm -hmm. Zhao. she won the the best director oscar for it i barely know i've never watched it again is. what's that i said i barely know who gal gadot is you know how to pronounce it. I was calling her Gal Gadot for fucking years. I thought, I thought too. So I heard her on an interview called Gal Gadot. I was like, oh my God. She Sounds looks like hotter in the Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman costume than she does in a suit. She looks hot in um, Red Notice on Netflix. Yeah. Especially where she's wearing the Russian gear. I was like, oh yeah, you take yeah. that fur hat off. Yeah. <laughs> It's the fur hat that did it. Ah, dude, I'm telling you, man, that plays the whole that that one essential thing to wear attire. If she just took off the fur hat and it was the fur jacket, everyone would be like, "You're a piece of shit," and throw red paint on her. Um, yeah. But this time she wore the hat. I was like, "Oh, she's Russian. You can tell by the hat." <laughs> uh, but yeah, in in Nomadland, this movie it goes into the life of someone that basically is on the road twenty four seven, who lives their life and they like you know they'll start a job at amazon and then they're like well it's time to move on now then they'll go to like a um a tourist attraction be like one of the the people that shows them around 
you see them see uh what's her face fuck francis mcdormand shitting in a bucket because <laughs> that's what they do on the road like that's their porta potty type thing i'd like to like see a-, a movie about a mascot at disney world that just goes on a psychotic rampage and just slowly starts fucking killing people one by one every day throughout the park and he gets like let's say two and a half years in where he starts getting sloppy so then they 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 check him and he's going over the fence like under the roller coaster where people drop their cell phones and he waits for one of these kids he'd be like god damn it i dropped my cell phone it's okay my mom will buy me another one and then he's walking down there to get his cell phone and a fucking giant bullwinkle sized moose comes out it's a dude in an outfit and just fucking takes him puts his head on the track and then there as the people are riding down the track it's a dude's head popped up in the thing like ah! and the thing just slices his head off that's some next level dark shit. <laughs> I do. I know. That's what I think of every time I'm on these roller coasters. Whenever I used to go on like a roller coaster, which I've never been on one with a, with a loop. Um, just, that's too much for me. I got to. I hate roller coasters. Is it because it's scary? Yeah. And it goes fast. Like I don't like speed and heights. I'll do anything on the ground speed wise, but I'll never um, do anything that does like a loop. Or does something that's up in the air just freaks me the fuck out. Because I think of that. There was a roller coaster I was on when I was a kid. And I swear to God, my dad even said this to me when we got off of it. It was at Adventure Mountain or whatever it's called over here in the States. He goes, if I was just a little bit taller, that thing would have took my fucking head off. Like he had to, he had to basically duck. You know when you have like a lamp? Or you have something like a chandelier hanging, and it it's yeah. just a little bit above your eyesight, but you, you're you still move like you're about to hit your head on it, like if you're walking through a doorway. That's what my dad had to do on this ride. He had to duck, and he's like, "That thing almost took my fucking head off." And I'm like, "Yeah, I've been on roller coasters where I've seen like the track is just low enough where I'm like, I hope a fucking person like Shaquille O'Neal doesn't get on this goddamn ride, or we're gonna lose a national treasure." <laughs> I feel like that with my legs. And like the supporting um, beams, I feel like my feet are just gonna go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm just gonna like your feet would rip walk right off and off, die. Dude. Your feet would rip right off. You're not walking <laughs> off. You're fucking getting dragged out on a stretcher because half your torso is gone. It's always those like weird ones where they like they let you kind of free fall. They swing and then they let you, like the pirate ship, and they let you free fall. That I'm thinking like you know the big bolt in the center is just gonna go jink. And everyone's going to hear it. And then that feeling of just falling and then hitting the ground or like some, some carnivals and rides are by the sea. And so I fear that I'll be strapped into this like roller coaster chair thing. It's going to go off the rails, fall into the water. I'm going to like keep trying to open this thing and I'm drowning and I'm panicking because my son's in like, you know, the car in front of me and I'm freaking out. No, this is like, me just like this is oh, one of the thought. fears that i Jesus have Jesus christ i was like you went into a whole scenario where i'm like what the fuck's <laughs> happening is this actually real life or is he, is he talking about an experience you had they did that that happened at fucking disneyland um what was recently see here's the issue with um social media and like technology now before if i would get on a ride or something my grandma would be like it's not gonna crash i would get on those swing things and it would swing you around you know like up in the air like all over the place and yeah. I, I was like, I, I never even thought of the swing at this detached and he just flew fucking all the way across the park like a goddamn yeah. frisbee. Um, but my grandma was like, it's never going to do that, but I'm not going to get on it. But then now if you look it up, there was that recent one, like you're talking about the pirate ship that goes around. There was yeah. a bolt that did come loose on the ride and the thing started shifting and the guy tried to shut it off. But as it was getting up to the top, it would rock the whole thing and it ended up did falling. It didn't kill anybody. It just crashed like the giant bench things, like the long ones where it fits like 100 people and it just swings yeah. back and forth like a moving bus kind of type thing. Now it's like, oh, yeah. shit. Like if you try and tell a kid it's not going to crash, that doesn't happen. Fucking look that shit up. They'll look it up and they'll see like a thousand videos on it because social media is so bad. It's like um the difference between an amusement park and a carnival. Something happens at a carnival. They're gone the next fucking day. There's no, that, that whole area is just an open fucking field. You can't sue or anything. <sighs> this is the sort of shit that like, you know, having kids, you're forced to go on those rides and you can't say anything. No, you say don't, I'm not going, for, you can go on it. If you die, I don't give a shit. I can make 10 more of you. 
See, that's why I'm obligated because I'm like, if you're going to die, I don't want to have to explain it. So I'm dying too. Okay. So we're both going. It but it's kind of like, uh, I think that's only with your first kid. Your second one, it's like, eh. It's kind of like doing the same thing. By the time you have like cheaper by the dozen where you have like 12 kids, you don't really give a fuck about the 12th one. Like you got 11 more left. Jesus, 12 kids. I would be bald. <laughs> Is it causing you to lose hair, kids? Yeah, with the stress. Is it aging you like the president gets aged where look he looks like older than he was? <laughs> he sometimes looks like a different person. Well, that's the thing with every if you look at the have you ever seen the whole timeline of the presidencies where it shows everyone from their entrance to their exit and how old they look? Yeah, that Obama, Obama was I the mean, worst. yeah, Obama got like white hair. Then he got a bunch of wrinkles. He was perfectly fine before that. It just shows you. Yeah. I wonder what stress goes through their head, man. Like, I really would like to if you could pick one thing in the world, one thing at all, one thing to really understand or know more about, what would you choose? Um, Jesus, I've never been asked this question. One thing to understand. Um, I would really love to see if they actually propagandized Reagan to make him sound crazy. And he was actually very, very clear because like Reagan's probably the most famous person when it comes to those UFO stories or any of the UFO crowd. Mm -hmm. He talked about how I don't believe we're the only things in this universe and it would be stupid to think so. Then he, what he starts going through like signs of Alzheimer's and they talk about how he was slowly losing it towards the end of his presidency. I go, I wonder if all those stories are made up because he did expose some truths. It could have been. It very well could have been. Uh, that doesn't sound far from anything that's that's kind of been done ever. I mean, I would like to know what happened with JFK. He got shot. Like, who in the was head. it really? Boom. Yeah, that was but an like, easy one. <laughs> sold it for you. Busted. Like I just busted. I get busted. angry when people are like, D "Dude, didn't you not hear about the magic bullet?" I was like, "That's a load of shit, man. A bullet does not bounce off walls like we're in the fucking Matrix, man." Unless that proves that we are in a simulation and we are in the fucking multiverse. Could be. We very well could be. I don't think that one. And when, like, 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 so, like, it's weird, but I just got into watching, like, the Solanus Morissette documentary mm -hmm. and then started listening to some of the songs. And all of a sudden at work on the radio, what's playing? Solanus Morissette ironic maybe it's just because they just don't know when to let her die i don't know <laughs> i don't even know who that is to be 100 percent honest with you for real oh name me a song ironic <laughs> oh, um i didn't know you ought to know head over feet no. thank you no you'll learn nope is it older or new this was like mid 90s so she kept, she dropped in 93, right? She was everywhere. She dropped dead she in 93. Ah, oh, she sorry. Her her album dropped in 93. Wow. She's the she's the second biggest selling artist of the 90s. It's kind of like Britney Spears. Yeah. Can you imagine if she didn't go to rehab and all that if she was just like stayed being famous where she would be today? And she stayed in control of what she did. Yeah, but once she started shaving her head and shit, it. everyone's like, take the I was watching Meet the Spartans. You ever see that movie? <laughs> no. It's like a parody <laughs> of 300. And he's like <laughs> kicking everyone into the hole. There's like Ryan Seacrest. He kicks into the hole. And then Britney Spears is like shaving her head. She goes, I don't know why people think I'm crazy. I'm doing perfectly fine. Look, I can still sing. She's like singing and shaving her head. And she's got only the size <laughs> left. And the guy goes, oh, my God. And then kicks the chair. And she just flies <laughs> right into the fucking. That movie is so good. Like that's I saw those movies before I saw the originals. So it was so hard. It was like when I saw Scary Movie 3. It reminded me of signs, but so much of it was all before I saw the ring was before I saw all those things. So when I did watch them, I was yeah. like, I can't get over Charlie Sheen popping out uh, any moment. <laughs> yeah, I love those movies. Not so much like Scary Movie 3 and Meet the Spartans, but like Scary Movie 1 and 2 and Airplane, Naked Gun, 
Oh, Naked classic, Gun's man. a fucking classic, man. Oh. So you ever see Space Travesty? No. Leslie yeah. Nielsen from Naked Gun is in Space Travesty. It's basically a Naked Gun, but it's about they uh, kidnapped the president, they think, and they made a clone of him. So they have to replace the clone with the actual president. And the president at the time is Bill Clinton. And they have to go up to the space Mars base or whatever. And there's aliens up there. And there's like, it's just classic naked gun, dude. It is fucking great. Like they end up having a Bill Clinton saxophone battle, Bill Clinton versus Bill Clinton. And Hillary Clinton's like, which one's my husband? And it's like, (laughs) it's just so priceless and great. Where Leslie Nielsen, rest in peace, was probably one of my favorite actors out there because he would pop up in the most random scenes. Superhero movie. I remember when he was in there with that guy, the guy Drake, Drake. Drake Parker, whoever it was, I guess he was on that show, Drake and Josh, but I think his name is Drake Bell. And he walks in the door and the dude has a nail gun. And he turns and hits the fires, the trigger and the dude catches the nail. He goes, whoa, he goes, oh, my God, that was amazing. How did you do that? And he goes, it's easier than you think. And Kevin Hart's right beside him. He turns and shoots Kevin Hart's hand into the fucking table. And Kevin's like, <laughs> ah! and he goes, nope. <laughs> he goes, I bet you five pups. Or he goes, I bet you you could throw a punch. I bet you five dollars you can throw any punch you want and it won't hit me or it, and it won't land. And he goes, Deal. And he punches Kevin Hart in the face. He goes, Five dollars, please. <laughs> I'm like, That's looking great, dude. That dude is talented as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, he was a classic. Fuck, even Spy Hot was good. Yeah. All those movies, I mean, there used to be actual people that used to be like hired for positions all because they were funny. Like if you look at the old casting Mm -hmm. calls, there's a lot of people that they weren't like, if you look at it now, you're like, oh my God, they don't have a single person of this in there. They don't have a single person of this in there. Now I'm starting to notice the requirement of that all where I start wondering is like, it's only going to keep changing and changing, which I don't care about, but I don't necessarily, if you're observing a movie to check for a certain thing, like I was talking about in the beginning, check for a certain this. I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. You should be basing it off of if the movie's good or not. Like people don't watch a stand-up special anymore, hoping that it's funny. They watch a stand-up special to say, who's going to be saying this about this? Or they say something like, oh, she's a woman comic. And it's like, are you only laughing because of that? Like I'd laugh if the joke is fucking funny. Yeah. Same. I don't care who it is. Wanda Sykes is hilarious. Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen that in The Closer and the backlash from that. And now, even though Dave Chappelle's trying to do this really good thing, like open up a, a, a theater um, and a performing arts, uh, like sort of studio at the, at the high school that he went to, the students stood up and they were like, like, you're, you're a disgusting human being. You shouldn't be here. Um, what you said, like that kills people like wow okay so like whatever you do at that point like if you insult a demographic it's going to flow onto everything that you do well another trial that's happening with the gislaine maxwell trial and let me tell you that trial is taking six weeks and they have no footage of it they only have audio calls and transcripts from it which is like i just picture bill clinton or not bill clinton bill gates sitting in the fucking wings of the courtroom like don't say my name bitch don't say my name because he was with Epstein. Um, yeah, I think the juicy Smollier trial, the guy who did yep. the that. So that was a federal charge because he fake called basically over a thing, but it was waving your flags. And he goes, this is what happens is people try and signal to the tribe or tr- signal because they think they're going to get attention. I saw so many people put up a post about the Rittenhouse thing. I commented, I said, for as many people that raised, raised the flag about Rittenhouse, I better see you say something about Gislaine fucking Maxwell. Because the fact that that's not being reported, that's an issue. And that really pissed yeah. me off. I spent all day the other day trying to fucking look up that trial and be able to listen in on. I was checking all these different sources. I wasted four fucking hours trying to find out where I can listen to it. Now I just have to read the transcripts afterwards. That's fucking nuts to me how there's not enough stir up from the public to get that open out there. Because that's kids, man. That's mm-hmm. one thing that'll make people act as emotional as hell is when it's anything with kids. That's why it's always kids involved is you don't want someone to spill the shit that you're doing. You have to make them do something with kids. So then you got something over their head where people won't even listen to you. They'll just fucking want to stab you in the head. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It's a weird, weird world. 
And I think Disney's involved like, in it all, dude. I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm so skeptical on Disney right now. Like they're just, their hands are in too much shit. Like remember the conspiracy I told you about Disney covering up all these things with like frozen Walt Disney frozen's head, but then it's frozen the movie. Or if you look up, um, did I tell you about this or no? No, nah, so I didn't. My buddy had this. I'm interested cons- though. <laughs> so there's a conspiracy out there that's been like kind of taking over the market now. But my buddy said it months before it broke, and he talked about how Disney might be covering up all these scandals and all these cons- conspiracy type things. When you used to type in 1984, you used to get George Orwell. You know what happens when you type in ni- 1994 or 1984 now? Oh, Wonder Woman with good old Gal Gadot. And then when you type in uh, Endgame, you would think Avengers, right? Well, Alex yeah. Jones, before Endgame came out, made a documentary called Endgame, predicting all the types of crazy manipulational tactics. That's another Disney movie for you. Let's Then um, recently, JFK's birthday, or the, assa- the day he was assassinated, was the same day as Toy Story's birthday. It's so fucking sketchy. Like everything's connected. They're fucking it's it's just it's it it's I didn't start believing this until I saw that they made a Fauci documentary on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, what else are you involved in? Which makes sense as a business person. If I'm in if you're making roller coasters 24-7, you're making an animated show, you're capturing the minds of children. So now all these people that are in like their 30s or their like late 20s, they all fucking love going to Disneyland. Because they grew up watching that type of stuff so much. But imagine if you just get greedy and go, where can we expand out our market? Let's invest in electric cars. And then next thing you know, they got a Disney-owned Tesla. That's right. And they'll put it in the next Cars movie. Boom. A live-action yeah. remake of Cars. Ka-chow. <laughs> Lightning McQueen is a fucking douchebag. <laughs> Yeah, he'll he'll like go like he'll be on his last legs and they'll be like, there's only one way we can save him. And then they'll start charging like a defibrillator type thing, but it's actually an electric car. And then they'll just transplant him into that electric car and he'll wake up and you're like, oh, my God, I can't do an Owen Wilson voice. Oh, wow. And then, <laughs> and then like, yeah, there'll be like cars on the road coming this week. Well, so many of like the Marvel movies, they interchange the actors. I think I saw a post where they had all the actors from like the Marvel movies or they had all the actors from like Walking Dead. One of like three of the people are fucking from uh, Disney movies. The one Mm -hmm. one of the guys on Walking Dead, I haven't watched the show in forever, but I just saw the picture. One of the guys from there is like a bald guy. He was the guy who was in Captain America's elevator who talked about Hail Hydra in his ear and he let the people he let him take the briefcase. Yeah. Um, an end game and then there was another dude that was involved into disney then another person that was involved in eternals then a little girl that's yeah. in walking dead is involved in another one and i go oh my god you start to realize like maybe there's a marvel and disney controversy where it might have started two sides but maybe it's the same person that owns two sides like the father has two sons and he goes you're gonna be marvel you're gonna be dc then there's been this long fucking feud but really it's a fake fight much like politics it makes me think even deeper onto that well ike perlmutter who owned the rights to marvel studios at first right he was a massive trump supporter would never let himself get photographed or seen and apparently he was like ex Mossad or something. He was promptly fired by Bob Iger because he said like, you know, he was disrupting a lot of what was happening in the studios and Disney took full ownership of Marvel studios, bought it out from underneath him and basically said like, you know, fuck off. You're no longer needed. Disney so seems like it has a political side, but I feel like it's more about oh, it like, does. I, but I, I, that's what I think the disguise is. They act like they're political, but really they're trying to phase that out too. They want to be like only Disney, only Disney. There will be only one, one superior force, and that is the Mickey Mouse. It's fucking Walt Disney's frozen head. Just like, I want you to unfreeze me when we get to a point where Disney controls the world and now it's like slowly thawing out, we got to put him up. He's going to take two years till his head comes back and they put him on a robot body, like Agnew from Futurama. Yeah, he's just like, like the emperor he puts on the cloak. 
He's like, I've returned. I've returned. Exactly what they did in Rise of Skywalker, another Disney connection. They they make too many of those movies. Star Wars movie. I haven't seen any of the new ones. I've only seen the originals. Stick with that. Yeah. You're safe. I'm not, I just can't. I can't oh. extend. People get like really into these fan. I, if you could pick one fan base to jump into or one thing to jump into that you know would consume all your time, what would it be? Wow. Um, because if I didn't extend myself with just doing the podcast, I mean, a thousand episodes, if I wouldn't have focused all my time to that, if I would have did something else, I will get completely sucked into it, like playing pool or maybe playing ping pong or like swimming or anything like that. I would get so sucked into it. I just everything that I do, I got to make sure I go full into it. Everything goes towards that. You have to, though. Like, how would you know what the experience is like unless you, like, dipped your toe fully in? Like, swam in that shit. I'm sure that's how alcoholics think of their drinking. I just had to jump all the way in. <laughs> well, I had to experience a lifestyle. It's destroyed I tried your crack life. next. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, fuck. A franchise. I could only pick one. Jesus. Um... Blade Runner. Really? Mm. That's a tough one. They're not yeah. bringing back that one guy. I know. Uh, shit. Lord of the Rings, maybe? I think that's like the safest one. Fucking A. Whatever. Why do you think they didn't make it? Why do you think they didn't stick up there with the rest of their competitors? Why is it just superhero movies that are getting a lot of traction now? Like, why is it just all about superhero movies? I don't, I thought this trend was going to die. I don't think it's going to die anymore. Because of saturation, because it keeps making money. As soon as superhero movies stop making money, they're going to be like, fuck off superhero movies. We're going to make, I don't know. Uh, they're going to go into like, War of the Worlds or something like I don't know. Something that the kids are loving now. They'll and never mermaids talk are about, a big thing. They'll never talk about War of the Worlds. They'll never do any no. of those types of anything that like it, it's basically questioning about which reality is going to be the possible reality of the future. Is it going to be 1984? Is it going to be War of the Worlds? Is it going to be um living in a, it, the Truman show? Is it going to be one of these realities that eventually time is going to get sucked into? We're in a really strange time where the my pillow guy is a person trying to expose that there's an election fraud with Trump. He's a giant Trump supporter, the guy who used to do the my pillow commercials. Like that's fucking nuts. He did a convention all with Trump supporters trying to show that there was election fraud. And everyone's like, your fucking statistics, your numbers don't add up. He was falsifying numbers. He was trying to make money because he knew that they were a weak people that he could get money from. It's so fucking crazy. The times that we're living in right now, we're like, I expect the sham wow guy to get out of prison and just fucking become like the, yeah, he's in prison. For beating the shit out of a stripper the fuck this is a while ago like a year after all those commercials stopped playing i'm gonna see if he's still in prison let's check <laughs> he beat up a stripper which she did bite his tongue off so i mean how, how the yeah. story just spirals the <laughs> fuck <now. laughs> you gotta think about it like is it okay that he he hit her because she did bite his tongue off if he bit her ear off it would be self-defense wouldn't it tongue tongue not ear. I know, but it tongue. But like because she's biting, right? If he like went on a rampage and just bit her nose off and then bit her ear off, like it'd be self defense, would it not? Um, no. What if he did some weird zombie bite and bit her fucking eye out? She wasn't a zombie though. She was just a stripper trying to make a dollar know, but like, for you know, her kids. But who bites the tongue out of someone's mouth? Just bite it in half. That is wild. Let's see. What's his name? His name is Vince something. Vince. Sham. Wow. Guy. Still in prison. I wonder what that sentence was like. Vince Offer. Better known. What happened to Billy the Sham Wow guy? Well, that guy didn't get it right. Where is Vince Offer now? 
Uh, he's uh... an esteemed TV host. Vince Offer is the president and CEO of Square One Entertainment, a world what? Yeah, he's selling ShamWow face masks. <laughs> Dude, hang on a second. Do you know who Square One Entertainment is? No. So he, he got out of prison. He dropped out of high school when he was 17 and moved to Los Angeles. What about? Okay, I'm going to search up why he's in prison. Then remember Square One Entertainment. I'm pretty sure they make video games. In 2009, Vince Offer was arrested for repeatedly punching a Florida prostitute after she bit his tongue. Police records showed. Okay, let's look up Square One Entertainment. Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Let's see who Square One Entertainment is. Let's see what movies they produce. So Vince is the CEO of Square One Entertainment. What movies did they make? Inappropriate comedy um, with Ari Shafir. Commercials, quickie coated grass seed. So apparently they own the YouTube channel Inappropriate Comedy. And that's all I see with TVs and movies. Let's see how many subs Inappropriate Comedy has. Because it's funny how people forget. I mean, Ari Shafir was on it. It's just, it's interesting. Like I was just telling you this, this MyPillow guy becomes a giant guy scamming people out of Trump things. And then I was joking about the MyPillow or the, the slap chop guy getting out of prison and becoming some CEO somewhere. And look, he's a CEO of Square One Entertainment. How many subs do they have? I didn't actually say it's an actual movie in app appropriate. It's got Adrian Brody in it. Yeah. Bob Schneider. Isn't that fucking nuts? Oh my God. Like uh, Michelle Rodriguez, maybe and Lindsay Lohan. It'll be, oh, Jesus. Poor Lindsay. She was in Meet the Spartans too. She just gets out of rehab and then she gets drop kicked by a bunch of Spartans. <laughs> <laughs> Can't catch a break. Um, what do you think that is though? I, do you think that's just fame getting to their heads? Do you think that turned them or snapped them into the, cause everyone's got a limit. Do you think it's just fame or the type of polarization that money drugs and fame can get you or do you think that it's just inevitable like someone makes it go bad like disney says we're going to give you a million like the reason why netflix doesn't tell you if your movie's doing good if i made a movie and it got picked up for netflix then they're not going to tell me if it was good or not they're like we're happy what does that mean how many people viewed it where did they view it i might just do a tour out there and do my movie promotion out there we're happy it's so they can negotiate their contract but that fucks up everything. If you really look at like the fact of like, then you hold the keys in your pocket. Then all these people, instead of maybe negotiating a new deal, you're now like messing with their head, showing them like we're happy. It's like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know what that means. It means you're happy. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's people that like they got rich too quick. The ShamWow guy made a product. It blew up. He got all this money and then all of a sudden, like the rules of the game changed. This guy doesn't like, you know, live by everyone else's rules anymore. He's got his tongue in like some stripper's mouth. He's doing crazy shit that you it, just don't it normally probably do. probably grew back. Do tongues do that? Yeah. Like a starfish. I've bit off. Yeah. I bit off the end of my tongue before and it's grown back. Jesus. Yeah. People do it all the time when they're playing football. The one football player recently just got his tooth knocked out while he was defending the ball. Should have got hit so hard in slow-mo. It hit him in the jaw. You just see his front tooth pop right out of his mouth. He's like smiling yeah. off the field. Like, ah, that was awesome. He's just sitting on the <laughs> sidelines. Put me back in, coach. Uh, yeah. I Yeah, I think money... Money changes people, but then the idea of what does a rich and famous person look like and do and act like plays a massive factor into it. And people just go crazy. The first thing that they do is buy material shit. You know what I mean? No one looks at, well, let's play the crypto game or like, let's look into stocks. Let's look into property. Like, what can I do that's going to set me up for life? But people want short-term happiness. So they'll buy like 
a big screen TV and diamond rings and a fucking watch that costs the same price as a house. Well, those NFT things are so unreliable because then what happens if you buy a non-fungible token or buy one of those moments or buy one of those pixel art pieces that are going for like $30,000 or $300,000? Imagine if you buy one of those and then next thing you know, the next day it's dropped to zero and it doesn't make anything. So now you just have, you spent $300,000 on this little NFT thing and it's not worth anything. So you can sit there and wait and bank on it and hopefully it goes up to something. I think a lot of money that happens in the world, surprisingly from billionaires and stuff, is from older generations helping out younger generations. So I guess they're just expecting you to hold those values. And it understands why all the people now, they're not caring about future people. They're just caring about themselves more than ever. So it's kind of eliminated the factor of being successful. Like uh, Bezos, for instance, he started his company in what? He started Amazon in 2000. When, when did he start his company? Fuck. I got to look this up. Early 2000s, yeah? When oh, it was before that. 97, maybe? Bezos start Amazon. So Bezos started, really? started Amazon in 1994. But his parents gave him like a hundred something thousand dollars to keep his company running after his first year because it was about to go bankrupt. And then he became the successful mm. person that he is today. Elon Musk, his dad owned a diamond mine or an emerald mine. So it's like you start to realize yeah. that all these self-made billionaires, they're going off their parents' fucking money or some family member's money, their fortune. That Here's the thing is, if you had a billion dollars, in stocks or profit options are you going to, at your last dying day are you going to think about giving it to your fucking kids or your grandkids hoping that they're going to do something successful with it i, I might have spin that a little bit wrong but it's like imagine you're in your late 60s you saved up so much money that you're going to buy a new house for yourself to live out the rest of your life in your house but then your kid is companies tanking are you going to be more than happy to put your money into your kid even though you spent all that time knowing that you're not going to receive the payoff from that money they're going to get it it's about improving someone else's life using your hard work and effort and that is so hard for people to understand like even for me it's hard to even spend a dollar on myself but i'll spend money on everyone else just because i i think people have more viable options or on like it's i think we all help each other in some way to become successful um yeah me for instance i'm it's very difficult for me just to make things happen and i think mm -hmm. more people are better at doing that than me and i feel like then maybe in some ways you can help me become successful in that or maybe another way around yeah. i think we all interchange like little pieces of a bionicle yeah no one comes up alone you know what i mean I find like in our, in our indie podcast space, like we've all got to kind of like rep for each other and, and help each other out. It's just funny. Like when people don't follow that unwritten rule and then it's like, yeah, I'm going to follow you. Then I'm going to unfollow you. And people are in it for themselves sometimes. It's, it's just business is all about competition and it used to be like that's a great way to succeed but then now it's the whole competition where there's like nothing of just playing it fair like i recently watched an archer who like stepped up to go shoot a target the score was it had three rounds on it and it was two competitors the score was 10 10 10 and then the guy had non-qualified so he backs down from the target he's like fuck because he messed up or something he stepped over a line or something to go shoot his archery thing he's like fuck and then he steps off to the side and the guy steps up all he has to do is just hit on the board and he already wins the guy's not going to catch up but he sees the dude's yeah. upset and he just goes to even make it fair he just puts his bow down and gets an n as well too and he goes what did he just do and everyone's fucking clapping him on because now he just made the competition more interesting by giving up that a successful lead that giant strut forward by just making yep. sure he's at the same level with this person who accidentally slipped up. And I'm like, there's no way in hell that I would do that. There's no way in hell. I know a lot of people that would even have the balls to do something like that. Especially when gold is on the line or when winning a competition yep. or getting your name written down somewhere is on the line. Come on. Yeah. I don't think it also like teaches the right lesson as well. It's like, like you're, you're cool to just like lay in the gutter and make no money. As long as this person feels all right, it's like, yeah.
I think it maybe it's the sales pitch of that. Like, imagine if you can be successful mm. with that person being successful. It's not about laying in the ditch or maybe destroying your own happiness or your own successfulness, but trying to raise all tides. You know, once you switch the perspective of that, like I'm a lot of people have been saying like, oh, you seem pessimistic more towards like the thousand. I was like, it's not that I'm pes pessimistic. I'm more realistic on an aspect of like, we want change to happen, but nobody's essentially fighting the core issues, which is the fact that we can't fucking trust anybody at all like nobody is able to be trusting in other people anymore the fact that i i was telling a bunch of people to do my film and they weren't asking for any elaboration on it like what's the film about that's it because they fucking know me they get my personality and they know i'm not going to do anything crazy with the content that they give me i just want to make a fucking funny thing that is different than all yep. the other thing out there and that's trust yep. and that's built from a conversation we need more of that shit True, true. Instead of Twitter. But if you ask, it, look, if you ask me if I would rather have more conversation or would I rather have a movie about a psycho killer that works at Disney World in a moose costume that kills people, I would rather watch the movie about the moose that kills people. <laughs> it would this be good true. as shit. I wish I had Disney would connections, dude. I would have someone in that costume real quick and I would film a horror movie. <laughs> Disney would tell you straight away. You're not going to put anyone in our costumes, our characters' costumes. They're going to set you, send you down the road to like Knott's Berry Farm or Knott's, <laughs> Knott's Berry Farm or whatever. I don't know. And then they're like, you know, use those Scooby Doo characters. Fuck them. You know who would let me use their uh, characters? Hershey Park. It let me use their Reese's Cups and the giant chocolate bar costume to fucking film people getting drowned in the fucking chocolate river. That'd be crazy. Can you imagine a chocolate bar killing you? Oh, my God. They're technically killing you slowly on the inside. So now you have to really look at like them actually dunking your head under a chocolate river. All the little kids, one little kid strays from the pack and just walks over to the glass railing and a giant Hershey's cup just pushes them in the fucking chocolate river. He gets solidified in chocolate and then the kids eat them. <gasps> that, that's like some soil and green type shit. It's like uh, the game Candyland, except it's gone sour. <laughs> it's a good movie they plot. can do so much cool marketing with that i know like the chocolate bar that like you know you just see it like sort of like a chocolate bar it's not moving and then it just starts unwrapping and then you just see the eyes and then the angry like mouth with the teeth in it yes or you could have it like it's the chocolate river and it's just a shot of the river like from a low angle and then the chocolate bar slowly starts coming out of the fucking river. And then you start seeing the eyes like, oh, my God, it's not just the chocolate bar. It's a fucking monster. And then all you hear is like Barney's theme song. I love you. You love me. Let's all get diabetes. And then he just fucking <laughs> jumps inside people and kills them. <laughs> yeah, that's some freaky you, shit. Do you have Hershey Park in Australia? No. Oh, God. Yeah. Dude. The mascot, I gotta, I'll, let me see if I can pull up a picture of the mascots of Hershey Park, bro. We got I, nothing. I went there once as a kid. I kept tossing coins inside the chocolate river that they had open. <laughs> was it legit a chocolate river? Yeah, it was like a giant thing of chocolate that would just go down. Um, the mascots used and, to be cooler. And people could drink from this? No, 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 it was just for show. Ah, okay, right, right. right. Jesus, I guess they added say? more of them. Last I remember, it was the chocolate bar, a Reese's cup, and that was it. But I guess they, yeah. So here's the three original. If it lets me pull it up without an advertisement blowing my fucking ears out of my head. I love you. You love me. Barney killed my STDs. And here it is. Uh, you'll see what I'm seeing in three, two, one. Bingo. Participants will see. Uh, is it pop? Yep, there it is. There's the Hershey bar. Jesus. There's the Hershey yep. kiss. And there's the Reese's cup. I had the, I think my brother had the stuffed animal, the Hershey's kiss. Or no, I had the Hershey's kiss. My brother had the chocolate bar. And then we didn't have a third person to get the Reese's cup. So we didn't get it. But that was a, but I remember it was a great experience. But. I don't know. I could I could see them being horrific serial killers. Why am I getting Willy's Wonderland vibes from this? Because Willy's Wonderland movie. copied Five Nights at Freddy's, and it was a great movie. Yeah, I enjoyed it. 
Cage. They need to make a second one. Nick Cage didn't say a single word. Yeah, because they pay him way more money. What's that other one with Nick Cage that came out? It was like a Stephen King movie or something like that. It was like based off a Stephen King book. Like futuristic. Ah, that was something. Um, the color of the color of light something. No? Something like that. But it was interesting because someone said, you notice how this is where they change actors and it's Nick Cage walking shirtless, but you can't see his face yet. And then like it, it shows like this muscular dude and then it cuts to him and then it's him like shirtless and you notice he has hair on his chest now. It's like either they yeah. filmed a month apart or he just fucking was a different actor. And I'm like, this is great. I love when people point this shit out because it actually makes it funnier to watch the movie now. Yeah. <laughs> we should see more documentaries about like less about superheroes, more about like whatever happened to Billy Mays or whatever happened to the Sham Wow guy. Like I want to get the film scene of him getting his tongue bitten off and then everything that happened after that. How did he survive prison? We have a Jordan Belfort story. Can I get a Sham Wow guy story? So does that guy like like is he still out there promoting his stuff? Like, because he's got which one? Oh, the Shamrock guy. No, it probably yeah. grew back. Like I told you, he's a CEO oh, really? of a giant business now, man. He doesn't need to promote shit. He doesn't need to do anything. He's got his own product line. He probably has other people doing it for him. Jesus, it's kind of like Papa John's. They had to rebrand after Papa John's was labeled the racist, and now they got Shaq. They went the complete opposite way. Oh, they called us racist. You know what we'll get? We'll get fucking Shaq to promote us. Papa John's, man, like that fucking the crust in the, the sauce with the garlic. and mm. No, Domino's is where it's at. Oregano on the crust all day. Papa John's they is a cult give, leader. They don't give us that shit. It's too technical for our workers here. It's just sprinkling oregano on the fucking crust. Yeah, they'll fuck it up. They'll find some way to completely fuck it up. I once asked for a cheese pizza. They didn't put like it was like a How do you not cheese. put cheese on it? Like, what the fuck? It's a cheese pizza. It was the worst cheese pizza I've ever had. Or like you get like what they call a supreme, which is like like veggies, mushrooms, and fucking meat on there as well. I, I see. I think that there's a good and bad part about the evolution of food delivery now is that before you, the guy used to knock on your door and be like, hi, sir, did you order a double cheese pizza? And you're like, yes, I did. Here you go. And here's your tip. And you'd be like, thank you. And then you'd get in your car. And sometimes you get like, walk up to the cheerleader's house. You're like, oh my gosh, she's the most popular girl in school. And I got to deliver a fucking pizza to our party. Like, oh, bro, you work pizza delivery, bro. Huh? You want your dollar tip? <laughs> but now it's like, you just drop it at the door, take a picture of it and you get in your car and drive off. Yeah. It's all gone. They're making it harder for you to be, communicate to anybody anymore. Where now people just run into you in the store and they go, ah, ah, ah. And you're like, what the hell's wrong with you? I haven't <laughs> seen anybody in years. And it's like, you haven't left your fucking house, you piece of shit. And it's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. And I haven't seen any of my high school friends in fucking 10 years, I reckon. That's not bad though. I don't. I think once you get older, everyone just moves on to shit. Yeah, I have all their Snapchats. True. Hopefully, I have the ones I care about. So, if I see yeah. a Snapchat of one of them, I'm like, all right, he's still alive. Good, 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 good. He's doing drugs though. Jesus Christ, that's a party that he's at. <laughs> Keep doing anything. <laughs> pounds and pounds of coke. Jesus. <laughs> it's a Tony Montana party. If they really want to make people upset. All they got to do is not even say a new variant's out. All they got to do is just say Roblox is done. All these giant major gaming platforms are over with. PC pulls their network, like pulls Stream, pull or Steam as it called, pulls out on yeah. Steam, pulls out on Marvel, pulls out on Disney movies, pulls out on Netflix, pulls out on Amazon Prime, pulls out on fucking Hulu, pulls out on fucking PlayStation 5 online networks and Xbox One and Xbox a series whatever the, what's the new xbox i don't know i'm not getting any of those series things. x my buddy has two of them and he goes these are the most valuable things in the world i'm like you're fucking get the fuck <laughs> out of here with that shit dude i'm not waiting in line when someone was like i waited four days in line at the store to get this i'm like good fucking luck man i will wait till it's fucking if it's 10 years from now when you can finally get a console i barely play games as it is same same i got one so i got one because my um my internet 
provider was like, Hey, like you can get this deal. So I was like, cool, I'll get that deal. <laughs> I got it. I set it up and I was like, there is fuck all games to play on this system. <laughs> and then I just left it there. It's been going for like fucking, I don't know how long has it been out like a year now. And I've not touched it. And then like next week they're like, Oh, Halo's coming out. And I was like, I didn't play the fifth one. So I'm not going to play this one. It got too complicated. When it takes over like a day and a half to install into your Xbox, I was like, I'm yeah. not about it. Like, I, I, I got the new Forza when it came out. I played yeah. it for probably a couple days straight. And then I was just like, I think I'm done with this. Like, I just, <laughs> it's so hard for me to get. I, I think the only thing I can really get into is Minecraft because I listen to your guys' podcast. I listen to, a, I just listened to your latest episode. Um, God damn it. What'd you name it? Hang on. It's don't tell the title me. that's going to get me. censored soon. Don't tell me. Why is it going to get censored? In your country or mine? Probably in mine before it hit, like, T-Rex with a ball gag. Yeah. Says it was played. I think I played it Sunday. I was, um, because I, I like to listen to your guys' stuff if I play Minecraft or something, because I'm building shit. Then you guys will say something. I'm like, that's a, that gave me an idea. And then I'll build, like, a random <laughs> sunflower farm. I got a fucking nowhere. <laughs> I'm so, like vanilla in life and i'm also vanilla in video games like people build like diamond mines or they go exploring and adventuring i just go on survival mode and just see what creative shit i can come up with and i keep building and building onto a village and i become like a god of the village and then at the ending <laughs> i get up on my castle where i'm all the way up at the top of the mountain and i just drop a lava bucket and watch it all burn down <laughs> that's like i think that's the exact same comparable to getting a five star rating on gta and just like going for it just like Nah, I'm taking my Thelma and Louise moment. I'm riding off off the fucking cliff into the sunset. <laughs> right off to the side. Where is he going? <laughs> That's when I start throwing C4 packets out the window and just detonating them and just creating havoc in the city. Try and follow the, the traffic lights. I can't. It's There's impossible. So shit drivers. No, the game is set up to where you can't. That's the thing is that the game is expecting you to not stop at the stoplight. So the cars behind you go forward to know to stop at that certain line. So it's yeah. going to guarantee to bump you. The weird part about the difference between GTA and I think the difference between Mafia is, is that when you get, you bust something in the, this is, oh, hang on, I'm about to rant. Um, <laughs> the Godfather games were the best fucking games for Xbox where you could extort businesses and shit. I guess that's what the new Mafia yeah. game is, but the Mafia doesn't let you go out of the storyline. The whole point of Godfather was you would keep capturing different Brooklyn block. You would capture all these different types of gang blocks, but then you would extort these businesses. Like you would grab a bat, walk into like a strip club, and then the owner would be like, no, I'm not going to fucking pay. You already got my pay from the Falcones, and you just beat the shit out of them with a bat. You can throw <laughs> people on pizza ovens and shit and drive your car on. I was 13 playing this fucking game. It was amazing. And I think the second one or the third one was that it was in fucking Miami. And it was like more futuristic. I was like, no, I want to go play the old mafia games where you have someone in the trunk of your car and you just drive it to like a fucking train track and then set it on fire with a Molotov and just fucking walk away smoking a cigarette. You know what I mean? Like it was badass shit like that. <laughs> the graphics were dog shit, but it was such a great yeah. game. <sighs> they don't make them like they used to. I just think they made it more multiplayer than ever. And I was like, we need some really good solo games, like, but RPG yep. solos, like Skyrim was like really, really good, but they don't, they modded it. They let you put mods in and now it's just like unfun to play. Really? Can't you do like more shit? Like, isn't there a Game of Thrones mod or some shit like that? Yeah. But to me, I was like, I just like the original like feel of the game when it was like, it's like kind of like, you know, they've had sex once. But does it feel the same as if they've never had sex? You know, it's like yeah. she's probably yeah. or they've probably kissed a thousand people. How many people have you kissed? Like five. How do you feel about that? I feel like I would be so nervous. It's like, yeah, but imagine if they kissed nobody. Then you would be like, oh, my God, I'm a fucking pro. <laughs> right? I'm a God. Yeah. Now I'm going to tip a lava bucket on you. <laughs> It's like, I don't necessarily care about those things, but if someone goes like, how many people have you slept with? And they're like 150. You're like, Jesus Christ, 150 people at once. <laughs> no, I've not seen this video. <laughs> yeah. No, silly. They were all single individuals. I was like, well, how many people did you do in a week? Like six. Oh my God. 
That's a full-time job. Because if I was the guy in that relationship, I would just be like, Jesus Christ, I'm coming to grips with, I'm probably with a sexual freak. And it leads to like meet the Spartans. Every time the queen would meet someone or interaction the king would have, he, she'd be like, I fucking them. <laughs> like the whole entire time she'd be like, ah, ah, ah. like doing like tongue shit. And she goes, <laughs> writes, she writes like a thing on the guy's chest. And he, it's like a combination. He goes, what the fuck's that? And she goes, it's to my chastity belt. And he's like, score. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Those movies are great, dude. Nobody understands. Like, they're very, very funny and they're very, very ridiculous. But it's that type of comedy that is actually pretty thought through if you think about it. And random. Yeah. He's fucking starving in the middle of, like, the cold, like, shaking. And he goes, Leonidas was in the middle of the cold, a test of journey of man, scourging for food. And he finds a Subway sub and he picks it up and eats it. And he spits out. He goes, no mayo. What the fuck? And he throws the sub. And he's like, <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? He gets into a fight with a penguin and the penguin like fucking attacks the shit out of him. He's like, I'm going to fuck you up, bitch. It's like, what? <laughs> like, this penguin's aggressive <laughs> as hell. Oh, man, that's random. <laughs> it's good. It's good movie quality shit. I'd rather see that. Those are movies that don't get played in theaters, though, which this is interesting is that I think sooner or later coming up into this new year with the amount of censorship that's going out there, I think it's going to inspire more independent filmmakers. And hopefully that ends up getting picked up um, by these giant corporations, because I think some corporations don't care. Spotify doesn't care. Hulu doesn't care. Netflix really doesn't give a shit. Um yeah. But you know who does give a shit, though? The people that work there. Disney. Disney does give a shit. You better be PC. Chloe Zell. Took out my girl Gina Carano. How could you dare fuck it? She's hot as shit. Hmm. Fucked her over. And then um, Ben Shapiro picked her up. They're making like to, I think- very liberal movies, though. Like the girl is yeah. a is a security officer at a school that stops a school shooter. I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? I don't want to watch a movie about a school shooter. <laughs> if I want to hear anything about a school shooting, it would be the pumped up kicks song that nobody realizes that song pumped up kicks is about a school shooting. Yeah, but it's so groovy. All it's undeniable. Kids with the pumped, with up, the pumped kicks. up kicks. <laughs> Better run. Run faster than my bullet. I yeah. was like, I'm outrun pretty sure I my fucked gun. up the lyrics on that. Outrun my gun. Yeah, outrun my gun. Then the next verse is faster than my bullet. And you're like, you're singing it. It's kind of like when you start singing one of Little Nas' songs. One of his songs is like, if you watch the video, it's him banging a dude in a locker room. And you're like, now listening to the lyrics, you're like, oh my God. It's about like gay sex. Which isn't bad, but if you're singing it, thinking like, oh, I'm going to play this through my radio, like you're blasting it in your car and everyone's like, you know what that song really is? No, I don't. What is it? Just look it up on, um, you know, it's like Andre 3000. When you hear the song, Hey Ya, if you actually yeah. read the lyrics to it, it's about a person that they lose the love for each other. One person gets addicted to drugs and then it's just the love is gone and it's about losing that person. But everyone's like, hey, hey, hey yeah, and just starts. They don't even see it because the song is so catchy. You're not actually really paying attention to the lyrics. Yeah, and it's just about, like, you know, empty sex. Yeah. Don't want to meet your mama, just want to make you coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's the perfect, I, that's a perfect quote for you. Put it on a t-shirt, just about empty sex. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is all about empty sex. <laughs> um, But yeah, like, Lil Nas X, I felt like that back in the day. Uh, I found out that one of these soul singers, he was gay. And I was like, so he's really singing this about a dude. And I was like, oh, I don't know how I felt like that. But then the song was so undeniable and beautiful that I was like, fuck it. Like, you know, the best person to ever do it was Rob Halford. You don't remember Rob Halford from Judas Priest? No, I never listened to Judas Priest. Judas Priest was like a hardcore metal band. Basically, he dressed up on stage with a whip a fucking studded jacket of like one of those, like, you know, you see a gay biker bar. He dressed up yeah. like that. And he made other dudes who were straight dressed up like that. And people would go, dude, you're dressing up like you're gay. And they go, no, it's metal, bro. He tricked <laughs> so many people. Then they all found out that he was gay. And they're like, oh my God, wait a minute. What? <laughs> like how many people dressed up like Mick Jagger, but Mick Jagger's not gay, but then people dressed up like yeah. queen and, 
is Freddie Mercury gay? I don't know. Does it matter now? No, but back then people were dressing up in like leather belts and shit because they thought it was punk rock. And Rob yeah. Halford's the best one to get it done, pop it up on stage with the fucking black biker hat and a whip and whipping around stage. And then, I mean, hell, I'm watching half the movies now. There's uh, that movie Dark Shadows with Johnny uh, Depp. Yeah. Johnny Depp's a gem. I fucking love Johnny Depp. Um, Same. Mostly he bought every house on his block, but one that his neighbor refused to sell. So what he did was he built a giant statue of a middle finger pointing towards the house. <laughs> Cause he was like, fuck you. And just because, and, um, but when you're, Oh yeah. I was, that's what heroes do. Yes. I was watching behind the scenes of pirates of the Caribbean. And the one guy said, Oh shit, I messed up my line. He goes, Hey, you can't do that. Make that's a Disney movie. <laughs> and it's just, it's just so priceless. I was like, yeah, they're probably not going to hire you back. Even if it is in the bloopers, they wouldn't have you hired back after that. You cursed on their set can't even sully their territory because walt disney was all about that preserving the yeah. children never yeah. letting them experience the outside harms of the world and that's when it gets sketchy it's kind of like mr rogers mr rogers knew that the future was in the kids but for me and i've been saying it for almost a thousand episodes now someone needs to do a deep dive on mr rogers there's a dark have you watched the documentary me. no i'm not going to it's probably going to make me biased in my opinion no. Do they show any evil like, shit? As, nah, it doesn't. It okay, doesn't. then I'm not watching it. I want to see evil shit. <laughs> I was talking to a guy who studies religious studies, and we're talking. He goes, I also research into Mr. Rogers for the past three years. I talk about him. I'm like, please, for the love of God, answer this debate. Was he a cross-dresser? He goes, no, Mr. Rogers was a good human being. I was like, someone needs to find out that secret information. He's hiding fucking something. Mr. Rogers is clean. No. Clean as a preacher's no. tights. Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> He's as loose as a preacher's fucking butt flap. Won't you be my neighbor? I don't really care if he is a bad guy. I just don't like the secrets. I hate fucking secrets. It's like, why does Victoria never tell me her secret? Maybe he was the greatest serial killer of all time. Did you not get that joke? Really? I got it. Victoria, Victoria's secret. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. a good joke. You just fucking lost it. was a good joke. Was it like, was very subtle it. as well. I know. Slip. Slipped it in there, all lubed up like. Slipped it in like a disc. Slipped <laughs> disc. <laughs> um, it's a double entendre. Uh, I can't really take credit for the whole joke of that. It is from Little Nicky. I'm Little Nicky. Popeye's chicken is fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. <laughs> That's a great yeah, movie too, movie. man. <laughs> a lot of people shit on Adam Sandler. I don't care. It's a great fucking film. I think recent Adam Sandler is shit honorable, but behind the scenes, he's a very, very smart man. He made $500 million with Netflix. That's right. And Who they the make the movies take basically that deal? for him. Really? I'll take that deal. They need to make I'll a take f- that deal. Do you think they can make a funny 9-11 movie? They did. Uh, U Ball. Yui Ball. That, I, didn't remember see, him? I don't think that's in the States. Uh, it's this movie called Postal. Oh no! Wait, there's a there used to be a thing called going postal with mail delivery people about shooting up places. Yeah, but this is like this is taking on the war on terror. Apparently, it's his best movie. He's a dog shit director, <laughs> so he he was doing all these um video game adaptations. So he made House of the Dead, uh, Far Cry. I believe he made um. Rob Zombie's name House of, of a Thousand Corpses. In the name of the king. I never heard of that one. House of a Thousand Corpses. That was Rejects. That was Rejects. Yeah, Rob Zombie's a good director, though. I even liked his Halloween. A lot of I, people I shit on that Halloween. It. Yeah, I never saw it. I hate the Halloween franchise. Maybe that's I like why that you one. liked the fucking movie. Yeah. It was ten times better than the shit they put out. I just can't get think, into sequels, bro. When they start doing all like, oh, Fast and Furious 10, I'm like, fuck off. Uh, I'm done. Man, they need to stop. Like, I'm glad that they're acknowledging that, like, you know, this, this fucking franchise has run its course. It's done now. You know what I mean? Just kill that shit off. Diesel's going to die. He's going to be the biggest martyr, and people are going to be like, oh, it was so brave what you did. I wasn't. It's expected now. He's got to die. He's got to die. And he's got to die for family. Gotta die for the fan. I love it when they had um 
uh, I forgot what it was. It was Spider-Man taking on all those in the new trailer where he's taking on all the bad guys. And yeah. he goes, you're not alone. You got family. And it's Vin Diesel. They photoshopped his car and it's him jumping out, attacking <laughs> Lizard Man. I'm like, that's fucking great. <laughs> yes. that's uh, The best one I saw of that was Olive Garden. It, when you're here, your family. And then it's him and it says heavy breathing below it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking great, man. That made me chuckle too hard. <laughs> Wow. Uh, there's so there's so many good ones like they've even edited like like him all of his lines into like this family game of um pictionary and they're like dad guess what it is and he's like it's family it's like no it's not family what is it <laughs> it's, it's family it's always family. i'm just gonna like erase the the drawing now and he's like don't do it not for family he's <laughs> <It's> like wow <laughs> I'm surprised that like that the newest one is the one that really got that that meme out there like that newest one I, I saw it everywhere after that movie was released I was like yo <laughs> he must have said it more in that movie I didn't really notice it's like it's weird but he's saturated the films with that line so much that like it just like flies over your head and it's just like here's a one here's a two like let's take shots every time he says it and get fucked up by the end well it's pretty weird as a society we think that when someone's all about their family or someone acts like family's the most important value we laugh at that the fucking losers close to his family it's like <laughs> maybe we should be aspiring for those types of things <laughs> there are some family members you know you want to pick up a call for but there's other ones that call you like jesus christ it's a trumper or it's like some type of fucking <laughs> crazy type of conspiracy person. Like I'm a fun conspiracy person, but a lot of the shit I say, I think is rational, but people are like, that's conspiracy talk. I'm like, did they not say during the pandemic that they said that they were going to stop selling or they were going to don't get this certain type of mask so they could have more for hospital workers. Someone told me that yep. was a conspiracy. I was like, what? I thought it was a public statement that they did do that. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. We're in a fucking. They didn't tell us that. They didn't say anything like that to us. We just like, all of a sudden, we had masks. And people were just selling them like crazy. And then UK might be going back into lockdown. And shit. Wow. We'll probably go back into lockdown in Australia with the uh, Omicron. Omicron. People are Omicron. over here eating other people's buttholes. I don't see it going back. There is nothing wrong with eating ass. Exactly. It just but needs to be clean. It's not. It's not, a, it's not, it's not like Germex. There's 99.9% .9 of germs. That thing has, you can maybe clean 0.1 out of the butthole, but the rest is still dirty. You know what? I like to live dangerously. I like chocolate snack packs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rob, we've been talking for almost, uh, about an hour 50. Um, oh shit. Yeah. It's late over there, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's getting close to, uh, one in the morning. That's all right, man. I like, you know, I look forward to these chats. Congratulations on the thousand, a thousand episodes. Can you imagine the fucking hours, the commitment every day? Like, it's, it's a lot of work, man. You got to think though, a thousand, and then you take maybe one hour, two hour episodes up for like what, three and a half years. There has to be a full year of just me talking. Yeah. Like, no minute where for there's not. Sure. Yeah. Can you imagine if you made a super cut of all like just I don't have any you. time. I don't. I'm making a <laughs> trying to make a film right now, and that's my computer's crashed like eight <laughs> times. I'm like, fuck! Like I'm trying to get this thing to work together. <laughs> we'll get there, bro. We'll get man, there. thanks so much for having me on, man. Yeah, I appreciate you for doing the podcast. Is there a place where people can find you? Smoke and mirrors podcast. Yeah, of course. Uh find us on all streaming platforms. We're there. Um, Spotify. YouTube, we're under Logosmith Media. We host our podcast with Spreaker, so listen there. You help us out. Um, yeah, that's that's really about it. But we're everywhere. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Good pods, if you do that sort of thing. And remember, just empty sex.